Hi, this is Michael De Silva's from New Hunter Church of Christ. I want to give you some true insights about children. I said it on Facebook, but I want to say it here on YouTube so that other people can see it and so that maybe it'll help their parents and their family. This video will be entitled How to Rebuild the Bond with Teens That Was Once Lost. A lot of people say to me, is it impossible to get that bond back with your children? The answer is absolutely not. You can get that. Absolutely, it is not impossible. But is it going to happen overnight? Absolutely no. It's going to take time, like everything in life. Uh, forgiveness takes time. And bond restoration takes time. With a restore with your family. I want to tell you, children, um, you know, are fragile. We're fragile beings, because they are. They're changing every day, hormonally, spirit, uh, ideally, and mentally. And physically. So all these things are going on in, in a teenager's life right now. Every day they wake up, their perspective on everything, the way they see things is always changing. But, you know, there's nothing wrong with that because that's the way we all were when we were kids, when we were teenagers at one time, a long time ago. That is what happens. But if you want to get a bond with your child, you know, I, I, sat, around your, I sat around your table in your kitchen and I talked to you when your kids weren't there and it was just you and your husband. And I said to you one day, I said, if you want to get a bond with your children, these are the things that you have to do. And these are things that you need to do, not for a little while, but these are the things you need to do from here on out. You know, because when I see you talk about having a bond with your children, you get emotional because you don't really have that bond like you wish you could have with your kids. Well, you're going to have to do some serious changing, like I told you four years ago, in your kitchen with your husband. I said, number one, you need to listen more before you react. Be quick to listen, but what? Slow to react, okay? Number two, let your kids explain why they did something that they did if it was wrong. Allow them to reason, allow them to tell you why, but be calm. Don't be interrogative or super cop or smothering or overreacting, but be calm, remain calm. Let them explain things. Let them tell you why. And then try to reason or give ideas or solutions why. It doesn't always mean they get a punishment. Because they may not need one. They may just need maybe a better way on how to handle it better if there is a reason for a resolution. But sometimes just listening to them is all they need. Because maybe they didn't, they didn't need no, no lecture. And they didn't need that because they didn't do nothing wrong. It's just maybe the way they did it went about it. So you just need to tell them the right way how to do it. And then don't say they did it wrong. You know, because I notice your kids always don't, their kid, your kids always feel like they're not good enough. All of them, your boys, including your daughter, they're not good enough. That's how they portray themselves every day. And you're talking with this Barbara girl across the hallway, Barbara Poe, and she's not even, doesn't even have a degree in counseling. And she's probably going over your house right now if she's not over there with uh, her granddaughter to talk to you about what I said outside her apartment. And this is what I'm talking about right now. And she probably is over there on her way over there right now with her granddaughter to tell you the latest update. But um, she's not a person that is not a good person. She's got a, she's got a divorce and marriage. Um, she does questionable things with her granddaughter sometimes. That's why they don't she don't come over here as much. She's not here as much, but she is here, but not quite as often. Um, she might appear to you that her family is somewhat you know in order, but really it's not. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, even when you get this bond back with Beth Ann and your, and, you know, John, Jeremy, and Stephen, it's not going to be the same because they, they feel like, you know, they're not going to be able to totally trust you. It's going to take some time. But after a while, they will trust you. But even then, even when they do, they still won't tell you everything. They'll tell you a lot more things, but not everything because no teenager under the sun tells their parents absolutely everything because nobody does. And that's just the truth about it. It's not lying. It's just how we, how teenagers are. It's how we all were. Um, so there'll be a lot of, there'll be a lot of secrets that they'll take with them to the grave. And, you know, and that's not because they're bad. Things they're doing. It's just, just not things they always tell their parents. And if you want that bond to be restored, you have to change your attitude towards them. Like I was telling you, listen more, be slow to react. Uh, don't be so quick to judge or to pull something out and say, hey, you did something wrong, Beth Ann, or you did something wrong, Stephen or Jeremy, or 
you know, John, you know, you did something wrong, but, you know, listen more and try to come up with solutions and try to be a parent, but sometimes be a friend. Because when teenagers are growing up, they need both a friend as well as a parent. Now, that doesn't mean you just let them do whatever they want. No. But there's times where they need you just to listen and give advice. They need a parent, but they need a friend. Because wouldn't you rather them go to you than go to somebody else in their peer age group? Because they can't talk to you when you're the person who they should come to. Because they want your love, your attention, and your acceptance. But yet if you're over there putting them down... If you're over there picking apart everything they're saying all the time like you do, Sean. You know, if you're over there doing all that and you're not listening to them and you're always thinking they're doing something wrong, this is the whole reason why they don't talk to you about these things that they want to talk to you. You want them to talk to you about. And they're not going to do it over time. They're not going to do it overnight. It's going to take time. They are going to do it over time. But the number one, you need to surround yourself with people, Sean. You need to change your behavior, change the way you're acting. Because this is the reason why you lose a lot of friends, because you do the same thing with Joy. You've done the same thing with me. And you've done the same thing with just about everybody you know. And that's people don't like people that are always act like they act like they're better than everybody. Because you come across that way. And, you know, I understand. Because, you know, I understand that. But other people don't. But you reject yourself like that. People don't want to be around someone like that. Because no one is better. We all make mistakes, including Sean Shields. Everybody made a mistake. Everybody has told a lie, including Sean Shields. Uh, and everybody has done that. Because we all have. But the thing is to sit there and say you have not. You don't make mistakes. Or you, have, you never told a lie. It's crazy. Because everybody has. And maybe you think you have it, but in reality you have. You justify that's still lying talk your way around stuff or blame other people for your mistakes that's still that's still lying because that wasn't the truth you know so what i'm saying is surround your surround yourself around after you change and work on yourself you know reprogram yourself don't interrogate your children you, you ask them how they where they're going somewhere they're going over a friend's house or somewhere or over someone's house and they spent the night ask them questions but don't keep asking and asking and asking just ask one time that's all you need your kids will tell you what they want to tell you. If they don't tell you everything, you know, it's not because they're hiding something from you. It's because they still have to build that trust up with you. Because they know how you were always hard and strict with them and always were trying to, you know, punish them and sometimes spank them for things that really they didn't need to be spanked because it was a misunderstanding. And sometimes all parents do that because they think something happened and really it was just a miscommunication. Something was just misheard and so they end up getting hit sometimes for no reason. And that happens with all parents sometimes because we all do make mistakes. We're people. But most of the time when we get on our kids, it is because it is something. But most of, you know, but the way kids are, you know, the way your kids are, they're very well behaved. So you don't need to treat them like they're in a penitentiary. So they don't need to be inter interrogated when they do something wrong. And they don't need to be interrogated when you're talking to them. You know, if you want to know why they go to Charlie for everything, that's because he don't do that. You know, uh, he listens more. You try to do what your husband does. What your husband does, you mimic. Because that will help you to have a better relationship with your children in time. And get away from Barbara Poe. Because she's not a good person for you to hang around. If you don't want to be controlling, like you told me, you don't want to be prideful, then stay away from her. And, you know, stop bringing them over here to see her. You know? And try to work on your relationships. Try to work on yourself by changing your behavior, how you are with your kids. Because believe me, that's what's going to bring the bond with your children. Nathan, Stephen, John, Jeremy. It's going to bring it back. But it's going to take time. It's not because they don't want to tell you stuff. It's because they're afraid to because of how you act. Okay, That's why they have not told you as much. Not because they're hiding something or they're doing something sinister or wrong or sneaking around. No. I mean, they might be doing some of that sometimes. But it's not all the time. I mean, you got very well-behaved children. I mean, if it were me and I was a parent of your children, I be, would be absolutely proud of them because they are very well-behaved. And uh, they're very... I mean, me, when I say something to them, I don't have to ask them again and again and again like you do. I just ask them one time. They're not scared of me, and they just tell me. You know, and that's like Charlie. He don't ask him again and again. I've heard him ask him stuff. And he's not interrogating them. He just asks him one time, 
and they tell him. You know, it's not like they're pulling, you know, breaking nails and pulling toes. You know, they just tell him, about, you know, freely. See? And that's, you know, what you need to do, Sean. Emulate that. Be calm. You know, because every time they're around you, they don't feel like they're good enough. That's why Jeremy has made the statements, and Beth Ann, and all of them have that feeling. They don't feel good enough. Like, everything they do is in question or judgment. And why? It's because of the way you've treated them. Because they feel insecure. And that's why they feel that way. That everything is just not good enough. When yet everything they do is just fine. You know? It's the way you change the attitude, you know? And a controlling person would say, would always be criticizing everything that their children do. Or they would find fault in everything. And I think that's what's going on in your household. And that's wrong. Because, yeah... They may not do things the same way you do it, but by golly, they're children, and they're not perfect at that, because nobody is. So stop being so hard on them, and listen to them. I mean, I love you. That's why I told you this stuff four years ago, but you didn't listen to me. It just went in one ear and out the other, just like most stuff I said to you. But you know, I love you very much, and I love your kids very much, and I hope we can get back together. I hope this helps your family, because I really want to help. And I love you. Take care. This is Michael DeSilvis. Uncle Mike. Bye. Oh, one more thing. And when I was talking about, you need to surround yourself with people that are in God. Not Barbara. She don't even go to church. You know, and that your children shouldn't be in over here with somebody that is not in the church. You know, so it's very important to, um, to think about that. You know, because when they're not in the church, you really shouldn't surround your people your, ch your children or you, you shouldn't be associating with people that are unchurched, especially when they have no desire to go to church. And, you know, if, if she's come over to your house for Bible study and things, she's not there to become a Christian. She's there just to find out more information about you. So if something big and major happens, she can turn it around and use it on you against you because that's the kind of person Barbara Poe is. You know? So what I'm saying is surround your people around positive people, people that of a light of God, who know what they're talking about. People that have degrees like me in counseling. You know, people that know the real language and know the right stuff to say and to give you the right information like I have given you over the years. You know, surround yourself around people who are like this because it will definitely help you with your family and your children, your teenagers, and their development and, and, and into early adulthood. You know, this that's like what you want, someone that ha lays the foundations down who has a track record, who tells you good things. Because I, you know, for the record, I never said your children lie all the time. You said that. Because I, I don't think they lie all the time. I think they might lie to you at times, sometimes, because you keep, you know, interrogating them and they just want to go out and play because that's what they told me. So they'll just tell you what you want to hear because that's why they do it. Because they want you to stop, you know, questioning them because they want to go outside because they're kids. And kids will lie if they feel uncomfortable and they told you the truth, but you don't want to hear the truth, so you just want to hear what, you want to hear. So they just tell you. So then they go out and play. So they kind of pick that up. And that's why they do that. They don't lie all the time, but they do lie sometimes because of how you interrogate them. So you might want to think about that. Change your behavior. And then if you want that bond with Beth Ann and with the boys, you know, change the way you are. You know, do what Charlie does. You know, see what your husband's doing. And really, you know, that will really help you out a lot. It's Michael DeSilvis, Uncle Mike. Take care. Shalom.